What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. In this video, we'll talk about how to play defense in volleyball, specifically called base or home defense. And this video is suggested by That Tiger, so thank you so much for this video suggestion. Base or home defense is the first defensive formation that you will start all of your defensive schemes with. As soon as the ball goes over the net on the opposing side, whether you're serving the ball, spiking, or just sending a free ball over the net, you need to sprint to base and be ready in that defensive formation. The reason why base should be your first defensive formation is because it defends against three of the quickest things that could happen. The first situation is an overpass. As soon as you serve the ball, the fastest thing that can happen is for the ball to come back directly to your side because that will cover majority of where overpasses will land, which is usually short on your side. Then you'll have one person deep to cover the very deep overpasses, which is not as common. The second fastest thing that can happen that base helps defend against is a setter dump. If you want to learn how to attack the ball as a setter, also known as the setter dump, make sure that you watch the video by clicking on the link up here. Let's say you serve the ball and they pass it to the setter and the setter is front row. If they don't overpass it, the next fastest thing that can happen is they can send the ball over on the second contact. And base defense also defends against the highest probability of majority of the setter dumps that you will see. The third quickest situation that can happen is a quick attack. Let's say you serve the ball over the net or you spike the ball over the net. They dig a good pass to the setter. The setter decides not to dump the ball and instead decides to set a quick attack, that's the next fastest thing that can happen if the setter doesn't dump the ball. Now we'll talk about what base defense looks like on the court. The three front row blockers will stand one to two arms length away from each other. If the setter is front row, then the left front blocker should bunch in right next to the middle blocker so they can block the front row setter as well as help on the middle. If you want to learn more about how to block as an outside hitter, Make sure that you click on the video link up here. The three backward players will form a triangle where the middle back is deep and right above the baseline and the right and left back defenders will be very close to the sideline. A good way to communicate where your back row defenders should stand in base defense is what I call 4 and 4 which means 4 feet from the 10 foot line and 4 feet from the side foot line and also 4 feet from the baseline. So if I'm playing left back defense and base, I should be 4 feet behind the 10 foot line and 4 feet in from the sideline. That also goes for the right back defense. If I'm playing middle back defense, I should be 4 feet from the baseline in the center line of the court. The reason why it's important to be in this triangular formation is because it defends against the highest percentage of the three situations that we just talked about. Majority of overpasses will usually land short near the 10 foot line on your side because if the opponent does happen to overpass the ball, they will usually miss it by only a few feet over the net because they're trying to pass it close to the target and they end up pushing the ball over a little bit further than they expected. Very rarely will you see an overpass go all the way to the baseline, which is why you need to have two defenders close to the 10 foot line ready to pass any overpass that is just over the net. When the setter attacks the ball, usually they will push it forward with their left arm or they will go behind with the right arm. And the left and right back is already positioned for those sharp angles. And also you want to dig with an outside in type of mentality. The reason why it's important to stay wider in base and not cheat in because it's a lot easier for you to move forward and toward the center of the court than for you to start in and move away from the center of the court. Another good way of thinking about it is how can you make the best error possible. If I'm going to make a bad pass, then if I start wide and make a bad pass inward, I'm going to be passing toward people. 
If I start inward and I make a bad pass, I'm going to be moving away from the court and passing the ball away from people. So position yourself where you can make the best errors possible. The base formation also positions you to dig the highest percentage of quick attacks. When someone spikes a one ball, which is the most common type of quick attack, usually they will try to go around the block and hit sharp angles, assuming that your middle front does their job and funnels them to the side of the court. You'll notice that left and right back are already positioned for that sharp angle attack. Middle back's job is to read left or right based on where the middle front blocker is not blocking the ball. The middle front and the middle back should have an inverse relationship. If you want to learn how to move your feet to the ball in the most efficient and quickest way, make sure that you watch my video on passing footwork by clicking on the video link up here. In summary, we talked about three aspects of base defense. The first one is what base defense covers and why. It defends against overpasses, setter dumps, and quick attacks, which are the three quickest things that could happen, which is why you need to be in base defense as soon as the ball goes over the net, whether you're serving, spiking, or just sending a free ball over the net. The next topic we talked about is how to position your body and how those apply to those three situations that we just talked about. The third topic we talked about is the importance of having an inverse relationship with your middle blocker as a middle back defender. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your volleyball friends and teammates who are trying to learn how to play defense in volleyball. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel where I'll be releasing weekly volleyball tutorial videos just like this one. If you have any other suggestions regarding volleyball, athletic training, or fitness, please make sure that you search through my YouTube channel videos before providing a video suggestion. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.